just give me a thumbs up if all of you are able to hear me and uh, also please let us know uh, in the chat uh, in case i'm not audible or uh, if my screen isn't visible let me just check the messages and it would be great if uh, all of you all can go on mute uh, if you could please because uh, we don't really want any disturbance during the webinar all right all right so since we're all good to go let's begin right away so let me just tell you how i've planned out this entire session first i'll be talking about what zoho sales iq is followed by an introduction to the zobot and then about chatbot trends and how zobots have taken over the market how they stand out from other chatbots in the market and uh, then about why you should be using the zobots for your business followed by basics of zobots about the codeless bot that we've all been waiting for and then about answer bots and uh, demos of how to set them up possible integrations and then their endless possibilities so without any further ado let's get started so first of all, what is Zoho Sales IQ? And uh, some of you uh, who have already been customers of Zoho Sales IQ might already know about it. And for those of you that don't know about Sales IQ, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to Zoho Sales IQ and then jump into the specifics. So when businesses started moving online, a lot of relationships with customers were jinxed because of missed out conversations and delayed responses to messages. And this eventually happened to scar uh, customers' trust and thus the business itself. This was when we came up with the idea of on-the-go tracking and communication and designed Zoho Sales IQ, a hassle-free live chat software that was made to reimagine business growth. So it's basically a tracking and live chat software that can help you prospect, filter, engage, and segment every visitor on your website or on your mobile application. So it can help you boost sales, support, and marketing marketing activities on your business website or your mobile application. So who can use uh, Zoho Sales IQ? It can be uh, one go-to solution for various teams and departments in your organization. Uh, for example, uh, the sales team that would approach people that land on your site, give them deep insights about the product and convert them into customers. Then you have marketing teams who would want to target the right visitors. And then you have support teams who are in need of a smarter solution compared to email. And uh, also your customer success teams that want a simple report that provides operator data and statistics to gauge the performances of your customer support executives. So Zoho Sales IQ is for all of these teams and not just for one uh, team in specific. So why do you need Sales IQ for a business? Let's pick up a real-time example to help you understand the features better. Say you own an online e-commerce store. So you might have thousands of customers visiting your website every day. What will happen if these customers are left clueless on the website, you know, not knowing what to do or how to find the thing they're looking for? That's what happens to a website that does not have Sales IQ on it. So every visitor that lands on your website needs to be attended to at all times and offered help with respect to the website and what it offers. This is where Sales IQ comes into play. So when you install the Sales IQ live chat code on your website, every time a visitor lands on the site, you will be able to learn about the visitor, say his name, the region, how many times he's visited your website, what past purchases he's made, and so much more. So when you learn about the visitor, you will be able to assist and engage him or her better. And once you know about them, you can initiate conversations with them, or you can let them initiate one and then answer their questions. So in this e-commerce example, you can answer visitor queries regarding purchases, returns and refunds, payments, and all of that. And based on details like the visitor's score and the CRM position, you can gauge your visitors and then engage them using features like triggers. So you can automate this process because in Sales IQ, all visitor details are captured and you don't have to map it manually to your CRM. This is not it. You can do a lot more with Sales IQ. And uh, we are going to be talking about one particular feature alone today, all right? Because uh, when I, if I start talking about all of the features, this time won't be enough, all right? So we'll uh, have more sessions uh, to talk about what Zoho Sales IQ is all about. 
So we are in the midst of a once in a decade paradigm shift. I'm sure all of you might agree with me. So messaging is the new platform and chatbots are the new apps. So this shift is radically changing end user experiences and uh, developer frameworks and thus business models, how we monetize and how we advertise. Since these chatbots are proving to be a fantastic tool for customer retention and engagement, they've taken over a myriad of industries ranging from aviation to hospitality uh, to e-commerce. So this can be attributed to the growing preference of individuals towards messaging applications over social networking sites. And the use of chatbots enables organizations to deliver timely services at reduced cost. So why have these chatbots become the new trend? They have smart AI capabilities. This means that they can help you predict what customers will need or want to buy based on past purchase history and additional machine learning capabilities. So these bots can then begin to take a proactive approach to keep your customers engaged. And unlike human operators, these bots are up and running 24 seven on your website or your mobile app. So they never grow tired of answering visitors questions. You have a hundred different apps and tools that you can use to launch a chatbot and begin testing its effectiveness. So basically, there's no huge upfront cost, just the basic conversational mapping that you will have to do from your end. And sometimes representatives in your organization might not be having a very nice day. And customers also don't always want to see a grumpy face, right? So with chatbots, you can be least worried about this kind of a scenario because they're always emotionally positive. And responses from these bots can't get any faster, trust me. They can intelligently pass customer queries and get back to them in a jiffy with the most appropriate responses and suggestions. So as the technology behind these bots is advancing, their functionality is also improving and they're now able to sort out low level issues very quickly. And uh, there are chatbot APIs that allow machines to speak to humans using natural language processing, which means you don't feel like you're actually talking to a chatbot, although you mentally know you're talking to one. So, so far, I had taken you through the functionalities, trends, and advantages of chatbots in general. Now let's get to the specifics, the Zobot. So what is a Zobot? It is a bot development platform that is available inside Zoho Sales IQ. And with this, Sales IQ users can build compelling bots to automate customer interactions. So these bots can be programmed to respond, to act, and to qualify customers on your website. So they maintain a conversation with a user in natural language. Then they understand the intent of what the user is trying to say and send a response based on business rules and data of the organization. So this is how they function as a whole. Moreover, they can be run on both websites and on mobile applications. Then there are answer bots uh, in Sales IQ that work based on your resources. When I say resources, I mean articles, FAQs, etc. So the stronger your knowledge base, the more efficient these bots will be. And also we have the codeless bot platform that will only require you to build a flowchart using drag and drop components. This requires absolutely no code. So once the flowchart is done, Sales IQ is going to build your bot for you. Now that we know what bots in Sales IQ are, let me tell you how they function as fragments in the market, all right? So usually in the market, there is first there is a chat interface that uh, we use for user interactions on websites and mobile applications. As all of you know, this is where hundreds of message exchanges take place. Then there is a bot engine to design the bot software. So using these engine, you can design the bot to work as per your business needs. So without the bot engine, you cannot define the functionalities of the bot or it's working. So this engine is going to decide the flow of your bot. Then you have your business software that consists of CRM, help desk, um, calendars, project management, etc. This is necessary to store all of the insights that are collected by the chatbot. By this, I mean details like visitor name, email, contact number, location, appointment, schedule, tickets, and all of that. So in the market, there are companies that provide chat interfaces. There are other companies that provide bot engines, and there are some others that provide customer databases. So you always have to face the complexity of maintaining and integrating these three fragments together. But with Sales IQ, this is not the case. 
It offers Zoho Sales IQ offers a highly interactive and engaging live chat user interface, along with audio calls and many other features on websites and mobile applications, along with a bot engine. All right, which is the Zobot, which is a very compelling platform that can be used to structure your virtual assistants. Then all of the visitor insights are stored inside Sales IQ. You can also export the data that you store inside Sales IQ to other Zoho applications in case you're using any or other external applications that you've been using for your business. Right. So Sales IQ has also been designed to let you use platforms that you're familiar with. If you're an end to end Google user, you can choose Dialogflow. Those of you that are part of the IBM family can choose the Watson Assistant. You have Microsoft Azure. And so you don't have to limit your building to just uh, platforms that Zoho offers. You can also uh, integrate with other external platforms. So Zoho Sales IQ Zobot basically provides you everything under one roof so that you don't have to maintain and integrate the three fragments separately. To summarize, it is one system to rule out the complexity of integration of the UI, the bot engine, and the database. All right. So why do you need these bots in your business? So every business has hundreds and thousands of visitors or customers every single day. So there must be someone who's available 24 seven and can take over for your operators when they're busy or unavailable, right? This is where these bots come into play. So they identify potential leads, help in lead generation. They help resolve customer issues. They have the ability to assist visitors who speak different languages, shorten your sales cycle. They provide personalized customer engagement and also communicate promotions. So these robots are basically what cutting edge teams are using to automate their marketing and other processes. They have a super important role to play in customer experience, which is which is really important in today's digital economy. All right. It's because customers are more than willing to change providers or services at the drop of a hat. So you need someone like the Zobot to back you up at all times. Moving on to the Zobot skills. The Zobot can interact both proactively and reactively. It just keeps giving instantaneous and appropriate responses while also constantly analyzing the messages that are sent out by your customers. It knows every single detail about your visitor and also keeps them recorded in the database in case any visitor is getting bored of talking to the bot, which seldom happens and chooses to talk to a human operator. The Zobot will display an option for the customer to do so. And uh, they own natural language and graphical user interfaces, which is the base on which these Zobots function. So with this NLP interface, the Zobot will analyze the intent of what the user says and provide responses accordingly. What's best is that they can be quickly and easily integrated with SaaS applications. All right. Okay. So what are the different platforms that uh, Sales IQ offers for you to build your bots on? So we have offerings from Zoho's side. So we have a bunch of Zoho platforms. We have the answer bot that works based on your resources, your FAQs and articles. And then we have the codeless bot. So this codeless bot platform allows you to do everything that you do with code on the Sales IQ uh, scripts platform. OK, so it's going to let you do everything except that you don't have to write any code. You only have to draw a flow chart. You have to design your flow chart and Sales IQ uh, is going to do the, all the building for you. So whatever customizations you perform with Sales IQ scripts by writing code, that can be done without writing any code inside the codeless bot platform. So we have answer bots, codeless bots. Then you have the Sales IQ scripts platform. And uh, following that, you have webhooks, you have ZR skills. All right. So if you have a fully built bot engine and you're looking to integrate it with a platform, then you can use webhooks. All right. And then you have external integrations like Dialogflow, Watson Assistant, and Microsoft Azure. So these are the different offerings from Sales IQ for you to build your bots on. All right, so first let's look at one of the newest additions to the bot category in Sales IQ, the answer bot. All right, so what is the answer bot? It is a smart support assistant that can simulate a conversation with a website visitor in natural language. So whenever a brand uh, or a website is created inside Sales IQ, an answer bot for the corresponding brand will be created automatically. 
So the bot will be created using the brand name alias with default configuration. So this might sound a little new to you, but don't worry about it. I'm going to show you a quick demo at the end of this part of the session. All right. So I'll finish telling you about what the answer bot is, what configurations and what functionalities it has. And I'll show you a quick demo of what it looks like in the UI. All right. So moving on to the configuration. So to activate the answer bot uh, inside your brand, you have to configure four different sections. So you have a bot profile, you have resources, you have response configuration and behavior configuration. All right. So inside the bot profile, you will have to uh, configure the name. All right. So you have to give your answer bot a name. You can also add a picture or an avatar for your bot. Then you add a description for the bot. This is for the visitor to understand the personality of the bot he or she is interacting with. Then you set up working hours for your bots. So your bot can take over when your operators are not available or busy. And you can even configure your bot to assist visitors outside business hours. Following that, you can associate departments of your choice. So the bot will only pick up visitor chats that are directed to the corresponding departments. So while we're talking about departments, I, can, I need to tell you two things that you have to remember. You can only choose from departments that are associated with the corresponding brand and nothing outside that. And private and disabled departments will not be displayed for selection. You need to remember these two important points while you're associating departments. All right. So there is a preview window as usual, like uh, in the old UI inside the Zobot platform, we had a preview window, right? So there's a similar window here on the right side of the screen where you can keep reviewing all the changes that you make at each stage of setting up the answer bot. So this window will give you an idea of what each configuration will look like inside the live chat window of the website. So step number two includes selection of resources. So these resources, the articles and FAQs in your knowledge base are the brain of the answer bot. So these resources, so uh, FAQs, articles and small talk. So these resources are the ones that will be used to train your answer bot. So the bot will use these resources to analyze visitor queries and answer them. So your resources module has to be perfect and strong for the bot to function effectively. Also, you need to have a considerable amount of resources to improve the efficiency and the accuracy of the bot replies. So we recommend having a minimum of at least 50 resources in each category because more the resources, the more powerful your bot will be. A strong resource base for the AI bot will reduce the workload of your operators and also increase the resolution rate of the bot. All right. So inside the select resources section, you will be uh, choosing either FAQs or articles or both. And then you will select a small talk package. So a package is a collection of possible informal phrases that a visitor can send during a conversation and the corresponding responses that can be given by the bot. So the default package will be selected by default, but you can choose any package of your choice. So now that we've selected resources, we move on to the third step, which is the response configuration. So here you have three different conditions that you have to configure match, no match and failure handler. I'll tell you about each of these one by one. So the first one is the match. OK, so if the bot knows the answer to a qu visitor's query, it will pick the right article or the FAQ and displays it. All right. So this is called a perfect match. So in this section, you will have to enter some uh, suggestion text like you see here. All right. This is the text that will be displayed above the list of articles uh, that the bot will display to the visitor. Then you can enable or disable follow up actions. And uh, these actions are customizable. You can customize the text that you want to display for each different uh, option. So this will be common for all three sections, match, no match, and failure handler. All right. And when you enable follow-up actions, you need to remember that you have to choose at least one follow-up action for the bot. So at least one of these have to be uh, chosen if you enable the follow-up actions uh, option. All right. You can't just not choose anything at all. You have to choose at least one. Then comes no match. So if the bot does not know the answer to a visitor's query and does not find any matching articles or FAQs, it will be a no match. All right. So in this section, you set up fallback text, the text that has to be displayed in the chat window when no FAQ or article matches the visitor's query. All right. 
So then you can also configure uh, the bot to display related resources when it does not find articles or FAQs that match the visitor's query perfectly. So you can enable or disable the related resource uh, suggestion using the toggle button. Then you enter the suggestion text to be displayed when articles are listed in the chat window. And following that, as usual, you enable or disable follow-up actions as per your choice. Then comes the failure handler. So this one gets invoked if there is an unexpected failure in the configuration and the bot couldn't fetch or respond to the visitor's question. So here you will configure the failure handler text, the text to be displayed if there is an uh, unexpected failure in the configuration. And then you configure your follow-up action. So once this is done, you click Next and you go to the next section, which is Behavior Configuration. So here you can configure the different behavioral aspects of your answer bot. So here you set proactive interaction criteria, which means you will choose when you want the bot to trigger your website visitor with a greeting message. And um, you can set the trigger when the visitor lands on your site and spends more than a couple of seconds, when the visitor clicks on the chat widget, when he performs a custom action. All right. Then you configure a greeting message that you want the bot to send out uh, to your visitor when the condition is satisfied. Then set up the time for which the bot typing status must be displayed to your visitors. You choose to show the bot typing status to the visitors to create a human-like conversation process. And followed by this, you can set up chat inactivity rules, rules that notify the visitor that he has been idle on the website for a considerable amount of time during the chat. So based on the inactivity time set in this section, the bot will send out messages to the visitor and then end the corresponding conversation. And you can also set the time after which a message will be sent to the visitor saying that, uh, you know, the chat will end soon because he or she has been idle. So you can add more than one message in this section and you can set the time after which the chat has to end and configure the message that will be displayed when the bot does so. And finally, you have allowing handoff. So you need to enable this particular option if you want to let your visitors connect to an operator in the middle of their conversation with the bot. So this will let bots transfer chats to an operator. So here you configure handoff text and then you configure the follow up actions. And once all this is done, you're going to click on uh, deploy and your answer bot will be ready to be deployed on the website and assist your website visitors. So let me show you this inside the UI. I'll give you a quick run through of what this uh, whole answer bot section looks like in the UI. All right, so this is an answer bot that I have chosen. All right, so here, this is the bot profile section. You will configure the name, the description, and you configure the working hours, and then associate uh, departments. So these are the departments that I've chosen. I have just one more left, all right? Okay. So this is the preview window that I was talking to you about. So any changes that you make here, you can keep uh, restarting and uh, checking it inside this particular preview window. So you know what each step uh, that you do looks like on the website. So once my bot profile is configured, I'm going to click on next. And here I have my resource selection. So I can choose either FAQs or, art and, uh, or articles, or I can choose both. All right. And uh, now I'm choosing a small talk package that I had configured earlier. All right. So the default will be set to default package, but you can stick to that or you can choose a package, small talk package of your choice. And once this is configured, I'm going to click on next. And here I have the response configuration. So here, as I had mentioned, you, you have three different cases, answer found, answer not found, and uh, your fallbacks. All right, so this is all configured inside the response configuration section. So here you enter your suggestion text and here you configure your follow up actions and uh, you can also edit the responses by clicking on edit responses. All right. And once this is done again, I'm clicking on next and here I configure um, all of the behavioral aspects proactive interaction. So here I've set this to when the visitor lands on the website and is active for more than 20 seconds, the bot is going to trigger a message. And uh, then I'm entering a greeting message. This has two different formats. It, it can either be text or in the JSON format. And uh, then about my response interval. And uh, then chat inactivity actions. So here I have two different uh, sections, sending a reminder and ending the conversation. And finally, I have handoff to an operator. 
So only when you enable this option, your bot will be able to transfer chats to a human operator and they'll be able to pick it up. So once I click on done, all of my configurations. So this one has already been deployed on a website. So I just wanted to show you all of the configurations. All right. So whenever you create a brand, whenever you uh, create a new brand inside uh, this particular section, brands, an answer bot for that particular brand is going to be generated automatically by sales IQ. Let's move on to the next newest edition, the codeless bot. So this is a code free rule based chat bot builder in sales IQ that can create a conversational bot without any coding skills. You need absolutely no coding skills. And this controls conversational flows like a flow chart. So it helps you generate more qualified leads, capture data and personalize visitor flow in real time with no complexity. So you can use blocks like um, buttons, names, emails and all of that. So I'll tell you about uh, some very important codeless bot terms before we enter into the specifics. So these are the different codeless bot terms. And I'll show you what each of these terms denote. So you have card, card holder, block, connected link, open link, link tag and preview. All right. So the first one is the card. Uh, is the card okay so these cards define the functions that are performed by the bots add remove and rearrange cards uh, these are all uh, actions that can be performed to change the bots functionality so you can add new cards you can remove them and you can just rearrange them inside your uh, screen and all of that inside your board and all all right so the first one was card the second one is a card holder which is the small plus icon that you see here so you click or drag and drop the block to the card holder to add a card inside the bots flow so when you click on this you can add different uh, cards to the bots flow the third one is a block so this one is a block so you drag and drop these blocks from the block gallery to the board to add them as your cards the next one is a connected link so do you see this solid link right here? So this is a connected link. They are the defined connections. So once executed, the flow will move on to the next card. So once you see a connected link, it means this execution will be completed and the execution will move on to the next one. Then you have an open link. So do you see this dotted line right here? So this is an open link and these are undefined connections. So here you can add cards to the open links to continue your flow, unlike uh, in uh, connected links. Then you have link tags that you see here. So this one is used to denote the rules or other conditions of the link. And finally, you have the preview option. So this option lets you preview the working of the bot as you make changes to the flow. All right. So these are the uh, important codeless bot terms that you need to know before you start using uh, the UI, using the feature in the UI. All right. Then come the controls. OK, so you have four different controls. You have drag and drop. You have link, attach and detach, auto arrange and zoom. So the first one is uh, drag and drop. All right. So I have tiny videos that show you how each of these controls work. So you can add new cards to the flow by choosing them from the block gallery or by dragging and dro dropping them above the card holder. All right, so that was drag and drop. Then we have the second one, which is link attach and detach. So you can reuse an existing flow that you had created previously by simply dragging and dropping the card holder into that flows card. So if you want to modify the flow or add more options, you can break this flow by using the detach link that will appear when you hover over the flows link. Then uh, you have another control called uh, auto arrange. So if you have a cluttered board, you can use the auto arrange feature to rearrange and organize your flow. And finally, you have the zoom control. So as the flow grows, sometimes you won't be able to uh, get a clear picture on your device's available screen size. So in this case, you can use the zoom option to get a, a full flow or magnify a particular flow in cases like these.
Then come bot context and visitor field. So you can store the information collected in the bot context temporarily till the visitor or the bot ends the conversation and use them across flows to make decisions based on it. So you can also permanently store them as custom visitor fields and have them available for use in integrated services like Zoho Desk, Zoho CRM, Salesforce, etc. And there are also visitor fields that can be used to store the property for the visitor permanently for other operators to view along with the visitor information in the sales IQ dashboard. Then you have uh, the preview and publish uh, options. So when you create your flow, you can check it in real time using the bot preview option and then publish it upon completion. So you uh, click on the eye icon at the bottom uh, right corner of the bot building board. And as you preview, the bot's current flow will be highlighted. And once the bot flow is complete, you click on the publish button uh, on the top right uh, corner of the board. All right. And you can only publish the bot if there are no more open links. So make sure you don't have any open links on your board uh, before you publish the bot. So these are the open links. So make sure these are all uh, connected before you publish the bot. Then we have blocks. So the block gallery is actually a collection of enriched UI elements and actions that are offered by uh, sales IQ that can be used while interacting with a visitor. So there are four categories of blocks. We have uh, response blocks to collect information from the visitor to complete uh, the entire flow. Then you have action blocks uh, that can be used to perform actions based on the visitor's needs and information that has been collected so far in the flow. So when I talk about action blocks, there are uh, a few unique action blocks that I want to talk about. The first one is the criteria router. So this one will split the conversational flow into various flows based on custom rules defined with the visitor's information. Then you have something called uh, the go to block. So this one uh, will actually switch back uh, the flow to the selected card. So that is the uh, go to block. Then you have the send mail block. So this will allow the bot to send emails during the bot conversation. It can be used to send details of the ongoing bot conversation. Then you have another category called data blocks that collects type based information like you know, name, email, phone, website, etc., from the visitor and stores them as per your flow. Then you have uh, integration blocks uh, to perform uh, integration related actions like, uh, you know, mail subscriptions, ticket creations, lead creation, etc. So integration blocks work based on the integration configuration for that particular integration. So there's no additional uh, authentication or configuration necessary here. So one specific integration block that I want to talk about is the add to mailing list block. So this one can add visitors to integrated campaign services like Zoho campaigns and MailChimp. So once the card is activated, the visitor will be added to the mailing list of the integrated campaign service. Moving on to the next most important platform, the most powerful ones of them all, uh, the sales iq scripts platform so it is a bot building platform that uses deluge as its online scripting language so it's mostly adaptive software development so there's very less talk more action and lots and lots of testing so with this platform you can create the bot of your dreams it means you can customize every single feature of the bot from scratch to match your business requirements so this uh, platform mainly functions on something called handlers. So these handlers are where the code for the bot is added to define all of the functionalities. So there are four handlers. Uh, so they're called the trigger handler, message handler, context handler, and the failure handler. So first, the trigger handler. So this is a piece of sales IQ script, which is used to invoke a custom action or a message by the bot when visitors visit your website. So this one will be executed only when the rule set in the intelligent trigger section matches the visitor's criteria. So it's basically a personalized proactive chat invite that is sent to the visitor. And with these trigger messages, 
you can attract customers to your business you can make them your prospects because you know who doesn't like voluntary help right so this is pretty much like a welcome desk at a car showroom so once you enter the showroom there's always someone who walks out uh, walks up to you and greets you and asks you what you need help with or uh, which car models you want to look at right the trigger handler works in the same way next is the message handler so this is one uh, handler that actually manages the process of reactive engagement by the bot which means this handler is only invoked when the bot receives a message from the website visitor so the combination of messages that we receive from the website visitor will be analyzed and it will be stored in the code and then the bot will respond to the visitor's questions based on the question that has been received from the available answers so the best example that can help you relate better is that of a call center so you call a support center you tell the representative that you have trouble with something and then they respond uh, to you with a solution right they don't voluntarily call you so that's also how the message handler functions then there's the context handler so before talking about the context handler i'd like to tell you about what a context is so a context is a conversational equivalent to a web form so these web forms are used to collect multiple inputs from the visitor to perform a single action similarly a context is a definition of a web form that collects multiple inputs in a conversational manner and executes an action which is the context handler so this can work in association with the message and trigger handlers that is the handlers can return a context instead of a message reply so an easiest example that i would like to give you is that of a web form so let's compare a web form and uh, the context handler so any basic web form on any web page collects information say for example your name your email address and uh, your contact number and once all of these details are collected there is an action that is performed which is the submit or uh, register or something like that say for example you are subscribing to a newsletter so once you give all these details the action that is performed is subscription to the newsletter so let's uh, look at the context handler so the context is all of these details that are collected from the visitor side the name the email and uh, the contact number so all of these details are stored in a context and the action will be maybe uh, say for example you want to create a lead with all of the details that you've collected from the visitor so the context handler will perform the action of creating a lead inside your zoho crm connection so all of the uh, inputs are stored in the context the name the email and the number are stored inside the context and at the end the context handler is going to perform the action of creating a lead inside zoho crm so that's how the context handler functions it collects multiple inputs and performs a single action then the failure handler this one gets invoked when the actions returned in the other handlers fail to execute so uh, the inputs here will be the details of the visitor the cause of the failure the previous response for the object due to which the action had failed all right so this handler will be disabled by default but if you wish to set up failure responses you can enable it so when can you configure this when can you set this up it can be this can be configured in case uh, chats are forwarded to operators when they are offline operators are unavailable during business hours operator email is invalid or inactive in the portal or when the character limit was exceeded in the reply given or any of these cases all right so these are the four major handlers uh, uh, based on which the sales iq uh, scripts platform functions so actually uh, to be uh, accurate the handlers are the backbone of the sales iq scripts platform so the zobot not only allows you to use plain text but also rich text or widgets like calendars articles uh, urls etc to ease customer uh, experience for this we have features called input cards and display cards so input cards are the different types of actions that are used by zobots to procure inputs from the visitors some of the most commonly used ones are calendars sliders location widgets response suggestions etc so here they are on the screen so this one is a response suggestion card this one is a calendar card and this one is a rating card then you have display widgets that help you display rich content that consists of different formats uh, images links etc 
uh, to visitors. So here you have links, articles, images, videos, attachments, etc., to assist your visitors with. Then come connections. So Zobots and Sales IQ are actually radically changing end user experiences and developer frameworks, uh, business models, how we monetize and how we advertise, right? So they've taken over a myriad of industries ranging from uh, e-commerce to hospitality to aviation and all of that. So all these industries need integrations with multiple products and services to keep their customer base intact and to stay updated about customer activity on the website. To facilitate this, Zobots and Sales IQ have a feature called Connections. For example, you can take an example as simple as an online automobile service website that allows visitors to schedule test drives and vehicle services. You can create a connection with a calendar service like Zoho Calendar or Google Calendar and record all of these test drives and the services that are scheduled. So the Zobot will collect all the details required to schedule an appointment, like you know the name, the email, the phone number, location, etc., and then fix an appointment and record it on your calendar. So this way you can keep track of all the appointments and make sure you don't miss out on any of them. So this post will talk about what uh, this one will uh, talk about what connections are, how they can be created, and how they can help uh, businesses save time and effort. All right. So connections are basically interfaces that are used to integrate third party services with your Zoho service. In our case, Zoho Sales IQ. So they're used in a URL invocation task to access authenticated data. So it's basically a framework to allow authenticated requests to an external service, easily ruling out the hassle of maintaining the different tokens. So with this, a developer can easily connect any external applications with Sales IQ. Then comes the next platform uh, from Zoho, Zia Skills. So Zia is a conversational bot building assistant. So Zia Skills platform uses the natural language understanding uh, to process and perform defined skills and actions to respond to visitor queries. And uh, with Zia's developer console, you can define a unique set of actions depending upon your requirements. So with Zia, you can actually directly answer a question. You can uh, construct an answer by fetching data from Sales IQ, and you can perform uh, operations dynamically based on the visitor. The next platform we are going to be talking about is Dialogflow, which is an end-to-end -end build once, deploy everywhere development suite to create conversational interfaces for websites, mobile apps, popular messaging platforms, and IoT devices. So it's a, it's a powerful tool that lets you create conversational uh, tools without the complications of having to handle NLP. So you can use it to build interfaces like chatbots, and a conversational IVR that enables natural and rich interactions between your users and your business. Next about the Watson platform. So the Watson Assistant powered by IBM helps you build powerful bot assistants for your website. You can customize it according to your website business needs and deploy it across multiple channels to bring help to your customers where and when they need it. So this is an offering again for building conversational interfaces into any website or application. And most chatbots in the market, they try to mimic human interactions. This can frustrate users when a misunderstanding arises. <coughs> Excuse me. So this uh, uh, assistant knows when to search for an answer from a knowledge base, when to ask for clarity, and when to direct your visitors to a human. So you can integrate the Watson Assistant easily uh, with the Zobot platform and let it serve your visitors effectively. The next one is Microsoft Azure. It is a set of cloud computing services that helps you build, manage, and deploy applications on a massive global network using preferred tools and frameworks. So this is actually... Um, 
this actually works through Microsoft managed data centers. All right. So when you integrate uh, Azure with Zoho Sales, I use Zobot, you can host all of the bot services that you have built inside Azure on your business website. Finally, we have webhooks. So webhooks are a useful way and a very easy way to implement event reactions. So they provide a mechanism whereby a server side application can notify a client side application when a new event has occurred on the server. So you can hook up the Zobot with your internal services with the help of webhooks. So this way you can get your bot up and running on your website to serve customers and lend a hand to your support executives. The sales IQ will send events to the webhook when a variety of interactions happen with the bot. So chatbots are still considered an emerging technology, but they're quickly maturing and becoming a staple in many businesses, customer service, sales, and marketing operations. And the list of industries that have been left untouched by the Zobots are very few. All right. So in consumer product industries, they collect information about customer issues and create uh, product tickets. In the software uh, industry, they play a vital role in nurturing potential leads and help in lead generation. They help schedule test drives and buy uh, and sell old and new vehicles. And personalized product recommendations have been attracting thousands of consumers towards um, the e-commerce industry. And uh, they help students in choosing courses of their choice in the educational sector. And uh, they ease location-based real estate and even help with hotel reservations. So there are no industries that have been untouched by the Zobot. They have been used pretty much in every sector possible. So with this, we've come to the end of our uh, webinar. So before we end, let me give you a quick demo of how to set up Zobots inside Zoho Sales IQ. Let's move on to the UI. So let me take you from the beginning. So this will be uh, your new UI. This is what the new UI will look like. So here, all you have to do is click on settings, then click on Zobot, and then click on add. So you give your bot a name. And then you choose the platform of your choice. So let me show you uh, what the Codeless Bot Builder UI looks like for this session. Since a lot of you have been uh, using the Zobot previously, you might know how to uh, choose these platforms and make the necessary configuration. So I'm going to show you the Codeless Bot Builder now. So I'm choosing the Codeless Bot Builder platform and clicking on Next. So let me just provide a description. And I'm going to choose a brand and choose the bot working hours. So now I choose the bot audience, all visitors, or I can set up custom rules based on my own uh, requirements. And then I'm setting up when the bot should initiate a chat. Then I set up the response interval and chat inactivity actions. I'm enabling this. And I'm also allowing handoff to operators. So once all of these configurations are done, I'm going to click on Create. So this is what uh, the Codeless Bot UI will look like. So we already have a welcome card. So when I click on this card holder, I will be able to see all of the response blocks, action blocks, data blocks, and integration blocks. So I can add whatever I want to based on my choice. I'm just going to drag and drop it here. And here I can make all of the configurations. I can change the names according to my choice. I can add a message here. I can uh, save in the visitor field or save in bot context. I can use dynamic text here. Let me just say, so once I type uh, the percentage symbol, all of the dynamic text is going to be populated here. So I'm adding some dynamic text. And uh, I'm going to add minimum selection and maximum selection and click on save. So once I do this, I'm going to be able to see all of the options right here. So the multiple option cards has been added. So I can add as many cards as, as I want to. I can add a calendar card and uh, I can choose the calendar type if it's a single date or a date range, all right, and choose a value to select. And I can show some suggestion text here for the calendar, all right, and submit text and I can just click on save. All right. 
So this is how you work with the uh, Codeless Bot Builder platform. And you also have uh, integration blocks. You can just uh, associate leads. You can create uh, tickets inside Zoho Desk. You can add subscribers to your mailing list and all of that. So all you have to do is just design a flowchart. And uh, Zoho Sales IQ's platform is going to do all the building for you. So. Everything that you do inside the Sales IQ Scripts platform can be done inside the Codeless Bot platform without any code. Absolutely no code is required. You only have to design a flowchart and Sales IQ will take care of the building for you. So once your flowchart is complete, you will click on publish. Make sure you don't have any open links like these. Make sure all the flows are closed and then you publish and your bot will be ready to assist visitors on the website. So with this, we come to the end of our session. Uh, I hope all of you liked the session. And in case you have any questions, please post them then and there. And we'll try to answer them right away as soon as possible. And in case you have any questions after the session, please feel free to write back to us at support at zohosalesiq.com and also follow us on Twitter for more updates on uh, these new features. All right, so I'm just going to give you a little while uh, to, you know, uh, send out your questions. Uh, and don't worry, we're going to be sending you a recording uh, along with the follow-up email that we're going to be sending you. So you'll have a recording of the entire webinar that you can uh, take a look at later and uh, clarify your questions in case you have any. All right, so let me just give you a while to uh, post your questions. So uh, since I don't see any questions, I'm assuming uh, all of you uh, did like the session. And uh, again, if you have more questions, if you don't have any coming up right now, but you have questions later on when you look at the uh, recording, please feel free to uh, write back to us. All right. And we will get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, I will see you uh, in the next session. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you had an amazing time. Uh, stay safe. Take care and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.